Through the psalmist, God says, be still and know that I am God. So let us come into God's presence and still our hearts. Let us come together to listen to God's word, to sing his praise. Let us be still and know that God is indeed our God. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our first hymn, which is, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We continue on our morning worship sheets. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Blessed be God forever. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and to be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness, we try, cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We use the words of great and wonderful and say them all together. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence. For your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Linda brings us our first reading. First reading is taken from Genesis 17, verses 1 to 7 and 15 to 16. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will be greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abraham. Your, uh, uh, Abram, your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you for the generations to come. God also said to Ab Abraham, as for Sahari, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sahari. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. King of peoples will come from her. Here endeth the lesson. For the gift of the word, thanks be to God. And Penny brings us our second reading. Second reading is taken from Mark 8, beginning to read at verse 31 to the end of the chapter. <clears throat> he then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, 
but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it? for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Phil brings us our reflection for today. And I'm going to share my screen so you haven't got to look at me as I bring it to you. This is perhaps a little sad for those of us that watch the funeral of Captain Sir Tom, an inspirational man, but a man whose life had known its ups and downs, yet was to finish so gloriously and remain such a good example. And this morning, as we look at Peter, we reflect that this must rank as one of the most spectacular falls from grace ever. Only in verse 29, Peter identified Jesus as the Messiah. And indeed, in Matthew's account, Jesus says to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Yet here we are immediately afterwards, turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. What on earth went so wrong? Well, I suppose it was Jesus who had told his disciples, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like his teacher. Yet although Peter knew Jesus was his teacher and had identified him as the Messiah, he suddenly thought he knew better. And he was telling his teacher, the son of God, that he was utterly wrong. And so the great and public rebuke in front of all the disciples Get behind me. In other words, you are my follower. You follow me. Get back behind me. Peter clearly listened and did indeed go on to be Peter the Rock. We know, of course, that for the time being, he still completely misunderstood the nature of Jesus' task as Messiah, and hence the nature of the task that he as the Rock would undertake later. So Jesus tells him clearly with all the disciples and us down the centuries what they and we will face. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Of course, we don't really want to hear that, do we? A bit of suitably humble, I guess status, recognition and respect, especially when you have some sort of office or position. But that isn't what Jesus said. Following Jesus does not mean becoming a court favourite or somehow special in that sense. It means following where Jesus went. There may be highs as there was for Jesus, but there will be the inevitability of lows and the carrying of our own crosses too.
He made this abundantly clear, and we still echo it. In morning prayer, on our weekday morning prayer, we recognize the cost of discipleship when we say we will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Some of you may have come across before the seven great social sins, often quoted by Gandhi, but actually originating in a sermon preached at Westminster Abbey by the Reverend Donaldson in 1925. The sixth of those is religion or worship without sacrifice. And that means personal sacrifice, not animal sacrifice. That makes the point too. This is not to say that if there are wrongs, and we can do something about it that we shouldn't. Clearly, we should. But those things that are unavoidable, without denying our Lord, then carry them, we must. But we don't carry them in our own strength alone. For as St. Paul tells us, he will be with us at all times. If God is with us, who can be against us? I have seen this lived out in many, many people, whether through opposition or conflict or illness, both now in this place and because of the way people follow Jesus, such crosses, I'm afraid, aren't always obvious. And in times past elsewhere, and the grace and patience with which people carry their crosses is a powerful testament to faith because it's not just the carrying of our crosses, but the manner in which they are carried. As was said yesterday in a training session we were at, the medium is the message and we are the medium. Those who carry their cross as those who believe that God is for us, and that's all that matters. Those who carry in his strength, that will mark us out as his followers. What did you see in Jesus when faced with the cross itself? There was no spite, no desire for retribution or punishment, jealousy or even anger. That is not what Jesus taught. Turning the other cheek, forgiveness, understanding, patience, love. I commend to you the words of an old revival hymn. It's called Carry Your Cross with a Smile. When I found this, it reminded me not only of Captain Sir Tom's cheerfulness and endurance, but also for many I have known, and I think particularly here of somebody known to members of St. Michael's and Beckles, Margaret Curtis, who will be remembered by many of you for her infectious grin and her laugh. It lasted like that of the Cheshire Cat, way beyond her own demise. And I think of her still with that. I'm going to show you the words of that hymn now. Then play it very shortly. Have a quick look at the words and listen. May its words and its tune stick in your mind. Like the smile of Margaret, the goodness of Captain Sir Tom. That when our time comes and when we have to carry our own crosses, we may do so with that refrain in our hearts and minds. It is very short. It is quite old and not a style that you might be used to hearing in church. But I hope somehow its message will come through. It's all right.
faithfully, willingly do, you shall reap a reward at the cloud. Only grace in your service can glorify you, so carry your cross with a smile. Carry your cross with a smile, with a smile. Carry your cross with a smile, with a smile. You may earn it from sadness to gladness be gone. If you carry your cross with a smile. those earworms that I hope may stick despite the oldness of the recording and the unusualness of the track. So Peter got it so catastrophically wrong, not for the last time I know, but in doing so received a lesson that reaches down through the centuries to us. May God grant us his strength to carry what we must that like Sir Tom, Margaret, and many others that I remember in our congregations, Peter and Jesus, our lives, despite all that we have, may shine as an encouragement to others and to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Phil, and, and thank you for persevering. Um, I think those, those words will stick with us all today. Um, carry our cross. <laughs> um, we're going to just have a song now to reflect on. Um, and just if you've just unmuted recently, just please make sure you're muted. Um, but we're going to hear and sing along to Who Can Know the Mind of Our Creator. Can know the mind of our Creator, who can speak of wonders yet unseen, who can reach the height of understanding to play the notes of wisdom's melody. The dust of every mountain Who has walked the mysteries of the deep Who has laid the earth on its foundation And who conducts the waves upon the sea I stand in awe So glory. 
the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Phil's going to lead us in our prayers. You are the God of all that is. All life, all hope, and all joy. And you have called us to follow you, to be with you, to share in the remaking Reimagining, redeeming of your world. And so we pray for the sorrow and pain of your world. For parents and children living in fear of violence and hatred, with little hope of education, health care, or security. We pray for families who have left and lost their homes, their place of belonging. We pray for all peacemakers and reconcilers for every man, woman, and child who dares to challenge injustice, hate, violence, poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church in a world often oppressed by fear, injustice and greed. Inspire your church to be the living reality of your good news to the world. Brave, generous, compassionate. Inspire your church to live in obedience to your call to sacrifice. Build your church into a community of love and care and challenge. 
lead your church into glad and willing acts of risk and trust. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the new hope giving vaccines. We pray especially for those in government and all who are dealing with the enormous challenge of delivering vaccinations to millions of people. We pray that wealthy countries will make sure that vaccines and medical expertise are given to all the countries and communities that need them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of us all, give to us and to all people the grace and the serenity to live our lives with freedom and open-hearted generosity through circumstances we cannot control. Give us hope and courage to imagine better times for ourselves and for our world. And give us the courage to change what we can change and what needs to be changed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who mourn the death of people they love. We pray for all who feel afraid and isolated. Help us to be for each other the love and the kindness we need. In silence, we name before you now those we know and care about. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you show to those who are, who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one as our Saviour, has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we pray the prayer of dedication. I'll ask Andrew to pray this for us. Almighty God 
we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our final song this morning as we focus our thoughts on the cross and carrying our cross is My Song is Love Unknown.
to our blessing as we end. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.